It was nearly Christmas. Annie and Clarabelle were packed full of people and parcels. Thomas was having very hard work pulling them. Come on, come on, come on, come on! The coaches grumbled and were feeling so full. We're feeling so full. We're feeling so full. We're feeling so full. Thomas looked at the hill ahead. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Suddenly, he saw a handkerchief waving from a cottage window. He felt better at once. Yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. He pulled his hardest and was soon through the tunnel and resting in the station. Thomas's driver said to him, That was Mrs. Kindly who waved to you, Thomas. She has to stay in bed all day. Oh, has she? Oh, poor lady. I am sorry for her. I am sorry. Engines have heavy loads at Christmas time. But Thomas and Toby didn't mind the hard work. when they saw Mrs. Kindly waving. But then it began to rain. It rained for days and days. Thomas didn't like it. Mrs. Kindly couldn't wave on wet days. But whether she waved or not, they always whistled when they passed the little lonely cottage. Its white walls stood out against the dark background of the hills. Then, one day, Thomas's fireman said, Hello, look at that. The driver came across the cab. Ah, something's gone wrong there. And there, hanging, flapping and bedraggled from a window of Mrs. Kindly's cottage, was something that looked like a large red flag. Mrs. Kindly needs help, I expect. Let's stop, Thomas. And he put on the brakes and Thomas gently stopped. The guard came squelching through the rain and mud up to Thomas's cab, and the driver pointed to the flag. See if there's a doctor on the train, and ask him to go to the cottage, then walk back to the station and tell him that we've stopped. The fireman went to see if the line was clear in front. Two passengers left the train and climbed to the cottage. Then the fireman returned, and the driver said, well, I think we'll back down to the station so that Thomas can get a good start. But the fireman said, Huh, we shan't get up that hill. Come and see what's happened. They walked along the line, round the bend, and the driver said, Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Go back to the train. I'm going to the cottage. He found the doctor with Mrs. Kindly. Are you all right, Mrs. Kindly? Oh, yes, thank you. It 
was silly of me to faint, wasn't it? But you saw the red dressing gown hanging out of the window, didn't you? Are you all safe? Oh, yes, thank you, ma'am. I've just come to thank you. You know what, doctor? There's a landslide in the cutting. Mrs. Kindly saw it from the window, and she stopped us. She saved our lives. God bless you, ma'am. And the driver went back to the train. They cleared the line by Christmas Day, and the sun shone as a special train puffed up from the junction. First came Toby, then Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle, and last of all, but very pleased at being allowed to come, was Henrietta. The fat controller was there, and lots of other people who wanted to say thank you to Mrs. Kindly. The engines whistled and called out when they reached the cottage. Happy Christmas! Happy Christmas! Happy Christmas! The people got out and climbed to the cottage. Thomas and Toby wished they could go too. Mrs. Kindly's husband met them at the door. The fat controller, Thomas's driver, fireman and guard went upstairs to give her some presents. Mrs. Kindly was very pleased. Oh, you're very good to me. Very good indeed. And the fat controller said, uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, The uh, passengers and I hope that you will accept these tickets for the South Coast, Mrs. Kindly, and get really well in the sunshine. <coughs> we cannot thank you enough for preventing an accident, a nasty accident. <laughs> now, I hope we've not tired you. Goodbye, and a happy Christmas. Then, going quietly downstairs, they joined the group outside the window and sang some carols. Mrs. Kindly is now at Bournemouth, getting better every day, and Thomas and Toby are looking forward to the time when they can welcome her home.